MLB The Show is your home for postseason baseball. It's Game 4 of the American League Division Series between the Minnesota Twins and the Tampa Bay Rays. Hi again, everyone. Matt Vaskersian. Welcome to our special postseason coverage of baseball on the show. With me is Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak. And Dan, lots of storylines here as we approach the start of game four. Well, because this is a five game series, this is an elimination game. I think that any time a team season is on the line, they have to play like it. I think they'll be really aggressive and try to force the other team into some mistakes. If they play well, all of a sudden this series is all tied up and we'll have a game five to look forward to. The postseason is officially in full swing. Lineups and first pitch coming up next. Tyler Glasnow is the man on the mound for the fourth game of the series. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Two words, Matt. High ceiling. This guy has a chance to be one of the most dominant pitchers in all of baseball. Big, tall, strong guy with a big power arm and a nasty hammer curveball. If he's throwing strikes with his fastball and his curveball, he's nearly impossible to hit. And stepping in, David Dahl. He'll get us started in this one under the lights. First pitch on the way and the first pitch of the night here is looked at for ball one and we are underway in Tampa. The one and oh delivery. Pulled high in the air out to right field. Vincent is there, one away. Now it'll be Nick Ahmed. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Outside, that's Bases are empty. One man out. High and deep down the left field line. And foul. Here's the 1-1. One, one. off here ball four and he'll become the game's first base runner here with one away. Whoa you know a pitcher is really fighting himself when he misses a zone by that much. I'm surprised the catcher could even bring that in. So stepping in is Luis Arias. Ready to deal here comes the first pitch. Ahmed stands at first with one out. And that's in there for a strike one and one. A time to look at our umpires in this one. Behind the plate is Dave Lawrence. Dan, we got Dave Lawrence behind the dish tonight. One of the best in the business, in my opinion, but sometimes has a tendency to fall into a pattern where he's given a little bit too much on that outside corner. Yeah, d -Roll. one of the things he'll do, he'll open up that outside corner, especially with left-handed batters. Here comes the one-two. Man, this guy's a grinder. Fouls off good pitches and doesn't seem to swing at the ones just off the corner. This guy's a pitcher's nightmare. Here's the pitch on two and two. On the ground to the left side. 
Oh, he makes the stop. On to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning. Nothing across here this half of the inning. And now the Rays will get their first opportunity in a scoreless ball game. Devin Smeltzer is on the mound and he'll look to wrap up this division series. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, it's hard to have all four of your pitches on, but I think if this guy can have two or three of his four pitches and have command of them, he's going to have a really good game. And now in the box, and Wander Franco. It lead things off here in the bottom That's half of the first. Wonder. And the pitch. Grounder down the line at third. And that's through for a hit. Hey, you want to be the team on the attack without question. In the bottom of the first, starting it off with a leadoff single gets everyone in your dugout going. to the plate now Robert Poisson as the first pitch misses to him it's ball one that evens it up one and one nobody out runner on first. Runners off for second. He swings and misses. Throw down. It's going to be far too late. That's a stolen base. The one two. Pops this one up. Sano has room in foul territory. He's got it one away. Batting third, the third baseman, Alex. One down with a runner at second, and that'll bring up Alec Bohm. Now the first pitch. Pickoff move to second, and he'll dive back in. The 1 0 home. Hit down the third baseline. He's right there. Throw gets him two down. That and with four. two gone now, we'll look at our up-to-the-minute playoff tree. And the question becomes, will we be able to fill a spot in the ALCS after the game, or will we need a game five to decide a winner in the series? Here's Randy Arena. Opportunity for him here to pick up that runner from second with two away. First pitch coming, here it is. Tried to check it and it's 0 and 1. Comes set, the 0 1. On 0 2 here, he doesn't have to give in with a great pitch to hit. He's got a base open, so he has to focus on making a good pitch right here. And an off-speed pitch swung on and missed, and with that, the side is retired. We'll head to the second inning here in St. Pete with no score. Into the box, Miguel Sano will match up with Tyler Glass now to lead off the inning. First pitch of the A.B. now. Mm, a little tardy there. No balls and a strike. Uh, this is what you get fired up for right here. 
hard fastball against a power hitter. I know he was late right there, but if he comes back, this one might not come back. And one and one as this one's in on the hands. And now a curveball that's low and in the dirt for a ball. It's two and one. Two and two. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. So here's Jake Cave to the plate. His previous meeting line with Tyler Glass now. He's got a three for five line. Now here's the first offering. Fastball well outside. And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. Here it comes on one and one. No contact there and it's one and two. Hey I know how frustrated he is right now. They say the pitcher gets a strike the hitter gets a strike and the umpire gets a strike. That's exactly what's happening right now. He's got to regroup. He's got one more. Lifted down the line and left. Boom. In foul ground. But this will land untouched. Lucky he got a piece right there. He was definitely late on that pitch after seeing a previous off-speed pitch. Oh, and he can't catch up to the fastball as he swings and misses for the second out. Looked to me like he had the right idea with the swing that on that pitch, and he just didn't the right get the bat through the zone in time. Nice. The pitch was away. He let it get deep, maybe trying to take it the other way, but it got too deep and was by him by the time his barrel could get in the correct position. Max Kepler the next to grab a bat as he will take a fastball in there at the knees for strike one. Ready with the 0 1. They have him played perfectly as it's hit on the ground. He's got it. Throw in time and the side is retired. Twins are set down one two three. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Last half of the second set to go and that'll bring up Mike Brasso. The first baseman. Michael. Brasso. Now the pitch. That's a real nice location with that fastball up and in on the hands. Hard to do much with that because a hitter really can't extend his arms very easily. A one pitch on its way. And he lays off for ball one. One and two now as this catches the outer half. Hey, I still believe in my heart the best pitch is a well executed fastball down and away, and that's exactly what that is. He swings at that, that's off the end of the bat. That's not hard contact at all, and that's an easy out for the defense. So he chased out of the strike zone that on that one. Michael Brasso becomes the first out here in the bottom of the second. Casey. So now to the plate Donovan Casey as he'll look at a fastball in there on the outer half it's 0 and 1. And now pitch on the way. Out in front here is this one scorched foul to the left. The pitch. A little bit off the outside it's one and two Smeltzer has become known as a guy that's tough to take deep so many starting pitchers find themselves snake bitten by the gopher ball but he really limits that 
Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Swing and a miss at the curveball, and there's your second out of the inning. Two up, two down on strikes in this inning. He looks really sharp out there, guys. Seven. The second baseman, Dillard Moore. At the plate, Dylan Moore. As he'll take a look at ball one. Trying to avoid becoming the third strikeout victim of the inning here. Now the 1-0. No Down low, and the plot thickens here. Three and O. Oh. Yeah, he's all over the place right now. No doubt, he's clearly fighting his mechanics. And this is taken low for ball four, and they'll have themselves a two-out base runner here after all. Well, they were obviously pitching around him there, and I don't blame them. With the bases empty and two outs and a hitter of this caliber at the plate, make somebody else beat you. Next, it'll be Francisco Mejia, and we'll see if they can make him pay for the two-out walk. Always considered a big no-no, of course. He comes set. Here's the nothing-and-nothing nothing pitch as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. Bottom of the second here with no score. Now a move over to first and a dive but he's back. This one's outside quite a bit off the plate that time. Fouled off. And a fastball called strike three, and the side is retired. Ray's strand just the one. We'll move to the third with no score. And that'll bring in Garrett Cooper, his previous meeting line with Tyler Glass now. He's 0 for 5. First pitch of the A.B. now. I love everything this pitcher's got working right now. He's got presence. He's got great body language on the mound. He's got fastball command and a nice early feel for his off-speed stuff. A swinging strike, and now it's 0-2. Woo-wee! That was some smoke right there. High fire right on by. Tried to get him to go after one below the knees, but it's one and two. Well, that's a pitch right there. You gotta just lay off. There's a good chance he's gonna throw it on 0 and 2. And if you can recognize it starting down in the zone, you know it's only going to go down from there. Fastball swung on and missed for the first out. So one away now in the Minnesota third and it'll bring Joey Bart up to bat. From the stretch here's the pitch and a fastball misses here to start the at bat it's one and oh. And a strike to even the count one and one. Third inning, no score to this point. One and two to the Twins catcher.
Here comes the one two. That's a good take on a fastball out of the zone. Hey I get it. He's looking for a ball to drive but that ball was a little bit too far up in the zone. That's one you normally pop right up. And he struck him out as well. So the bottom of the order providing little resistance here and there are two away. That was aggressive pitching and that at bat and I like seeing that. He Michael showed all hard stuff until Davis. the fifth and final pitch for the strikeout. When you work off your hard stuff it really opens up your secondary pitches to be more deceptive. So here's Michael Chavis now as he'll look at a breaking ball that misses for ball one. He'll attempt to put the ball in play for a change here with the first two guys going down on strikes to start the inning. A ball and a strike. Some guys are great low ball hitters but most guys especially guys with pop like this they're hunting for the ball belt high and above. So that was a nicely spotted fastball down in the zone. And he comes back with a fastball one and two now. Bases are empty here with two men out. No offer at the curve that time and it's knotted up at two and two. A swing and a miss as he chased with two strikes and that will retire the side. Down go the twins in order. Home half of the third coming up. No score. Bottom of the inning now, and standing in the rookie the outfielder, the Will Benson. The right fielder, Will. And now the first pitch. As he tries to go out and get the slider, but it's not there. It's strike one. You could tell by the hitter's balance after that swing that he's seeing the ball really good. His timing is right there, and I expect him to catch something clean. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss as he starts the third, the same way he ended the second with a punch out, one away. Boy, there's the perfect pitch right there. The straight changeup. He hadn't used it yet in this at bat. And what does he do? He uses it, pulls the string, and gets the big strikeout. That brings up Wander Franco. As he'll take strike one on the inside corner. He singled in his first A.B. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Heading out towards shallow right. Kepler's there for it. He's got it, and there are two down now. So the next to bat will be Robert Poisson popped into foul ground his last time up. Yeah Matty and I think that pop out was just a result of poor pitch selection. Got to see the pitch over the heart of the plate. He chased well out of the zone and as a result didn't really put a good swing on that. Two out lightning definitely applies to this offense. If this two hole hitter can get on they could start something serious. Now here it comes. Swing and a miss as he ramps up on the fastball one and one. Well they've really had an answer for keeping him in check in this series. He's offered very little resistance with the bat in his hand so far. Just off the outside that time laid off for a ball. You know he's probably cheating on that inside pitch after he got jammed earlier. If you're on the mound right now you want to try to hit that outside corner and there's a Pretty good chance you'll get him to roll over something. Now the 2 1. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing an incorporation of some more off speed stuff. But this guy's locating and feeling really good about his fastball. Two back to back. Full count three balls and two strikes to the Rays DH. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. 
Dahl finds some space out there for the catch to retire the side. Down in order go the Rays. We'll head to the fourth, still scoreless. And that'll bring up the speedy outfielder David Dahl. He starts off the inning against a guy who struck out the side last inning. How did they get to him here? I'm not sure, Matt, that they want to stay as patient. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. They might want to start swinging a little bit earlier in the count. Now the first pitch. A great curveball there. Really fooled him with that one. This lineup is flailing right now. They're having a hard time just making contact, let alone putting the ball in play. Pulled toward right center field. Center fielder on the run. He gets to it and makes the catch for the first out. So one out and nobody aboard. And that means that Nick Ahmed will be the next to bat. And now the first pitch. He'll start him with a breaking ball. Too low that time. It's ball one. Can't get around quick enough, and that'll move the count to one and one. Not surprised he's laid on a heater right there. Just saw an off-speed pitch. Wanted to stay back a little bit too long. Pitching has the upper hand early as we're scoreless in inning number four. And he'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time, and it's back to even now at two and two. He might have to look for a different way to put this guy away on 2 2. He's already seen the curveball a couple of times, so he might be looking for it. Now here's the pitch. And that is swung on and missed. He's down on strikes, and the first two are retired here to begin inning number four. I'll tell you, he looks really dialed in on the bump right there. He's got a shutout going, and he really seems to have this lineup off balance. Even when he challenges them up in the zone, they don't have an answer for it. That'll bring up Luis Arise. As the first pitch to him is taken low and away for ball one. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Now the 1 0 is laid off for ball two. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. The 2 0 on the way is in there for strike one. He's fallen behind now, 3 and 1. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. The 3 1. And this is taken low for ball four, and they'll have themselves a two-out base runner here after all. They haven't been able to register a hit against this guy, but at least they have a base runner here. We'll see if that leads to something. Now to bat, Miguel Sano struck out in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, but it was a good changeup, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. No balls in one strike. From the stretch. Yeah, and if you get a guy flailing at a pitch like that, heck, you're going to go out there and throw that same pitch until he proves he can lay off of it. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Fooled with the curveball there, and it's strike two. He's got a good feel for his off-speed pitch his second time through the order, and we just saw three in a row. Now a fastball, but that's easy to lay off, and it's back to even at two and two. We just saw a fastball right there. I would not be shocked if he tries to get this guy to go fishing right here. But we'll have to press pause as that strike three to retire the side. Twins wind up stranding one. On to the bottom of the fourth now, still with no score.
Ready to go in the bottom of the fourth. And that'll bring up Alec Bohm. The old adage, pitching and defense have been stellar so far. They've certainly kept both offenses in check. First offering on its way. This guy's been really on point so far, but it's not getting any easier. He has to get through four, five, and six right here. This is on the ground over to first. Throw on to first in time, one away. Now one down with the bases empty, and up next will be Randy Rosarena. First pitch on the way. There's a fastball on the inner third taken for a strike. And he misses with it one and one. No runs, just one hit, and no errors for Tampa Bay so far. And it's one and two. That's how you open up the outside part of the plate. Pound two balls in, and they get right back outside. Nice pitch. And it's fouled away. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. Just flat out froze him there. Nothing too deceptive about that four seam fastball, so I think he wasn't expecting it at all. Mike Brasso digging in at the plate. This will go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He's 0 for 1 thus far. And there's a fastball well off the plate inside. Two balls and a strike to the Rays' first baseman. Two out, nobody on. And a check swing here as he couldn't help himself, and it's ruled strike two. Two two pitches fouled away. It's up to a 3-2 full count now. Well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a 3-2 change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. Fouled away. The next 3-2. And that one's taken outside for a ball. He walked him. So no 1-2-3 inning here. They've got themselves a two-out base runner. Well, they've been unable to get to this guy, so they'll take base runners any way they can get him. At the very least, you make him work from the stretch and add to his pitch total. Now to the plate. Here is Donovan Casey. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. From the stretch. Now the 0-1. Back up the middle. And that finds its way through for a base hit. Onto the shortstop, but thrown away. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on it. Hard single up the middle. Yeah, watch your lips right there, Dan. Sent it back right where it came from. Into the box, Dylan Moore, as he'll take a change up here for strike one. Man, this guy's been incredibly efficient so far in this one, mostly because he's getting ahead. 70% of the batters he's faced, he's thrown a first pitch strike to. And that's up in the zone a bit, but a called strike, 0 and 2. He's attacking this hitter a lot more aggressively than he did the first time when he faced him and issued a walk coming right after him here. And on 
so he misses with a fastball. Hey, textbook waste pitch right there. Does he go elevated fastball again or something slow below the zone? A one two pitch. Brasso on second, Casey on at first with two down. At the letters, but called high, it's a ball. Now two and two. This is the pitch where you want to attack the zone. If you go three and two, then you put the runners in motion. Two and two. Here it is. Chop weakly up the first base line. Breaking ball, and he gets him to chase it in the dirt. Bart is after it, and the throw to first ends the inning. Rays strand a pair through four, still tied, nothing, nothing. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Thanks Matt in between innings I was able to catch up with the manager of the twins to discuss his thoughts on Minnesota's lineup so far and he told me he feels like they're being too patient at the plate right now too much of the time they're finding themselves in disadvantage counts like 0 2 and 1 2 and that's basically never a formula for success. He said they're getting a lot of strikes to swing at so the emphasis the rest of the game has to be to jump on those strikes early in the at bat. Thank you Heidi. All set for the start of the inning and digging in is the outfielder Jake Cave. And the pitch as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball one and oh. Now here's the pitch. Pulled high in the air out to right field. Vinson is there and he has it for the out. So bases are empty with one out now. And that'll bring up the outfielder Max Kepler. First offering. And that's in there for strike one. That's a pitch he'd like to have back. You're not going to see very many pitches like that from a pitcher of this quality. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back to take a swing at it. No runs, no hits, and no errors in the ballgame for Minnesota. And that's into the corner, a foul ball in right. There's another pitch for a strike, and this guy's really attacking hitters well tonight, being aggressive early on. And if he continues to throw strikes like he is, he's going to have a pretty good night. Looking to put him away. Here's the 0 2. Good waste pitch, 1 and 2. Pretty standard fastball right there, 0 and 2. Now he's changed the eye level of the batter so he can start working something in like an off speed curveball down in the zone. The count now at two and two. Here's the pitch. And he struck him out. Strikeout number eight now in the ballgame for him. Up next, next will be the designated, the designated hitter, designated Garrett player. Cooper. This guy is still looking at a zero in the hit column. Here's the first pitch to him. Curveball and that misses in the dirt for ball one. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he fouls this one off. The 1 1. This is a good at bat so far here with two away. If you're going to go down one, two, three, at least make the guy work for it. He's doing that, and he's even gotten himself into a good hitter's count now. The 3 1. 
And that one's taken outside for a ball. He walked him. So no one, two, three inning here. They've got themselves a two out base runner. Man, that's just now painful for a pitcher right there. A 3 2 offering that was right on the corner, but he couldn't get him to chase, and he doesn't get the call. Can't beat yourself up about that one too much. So up steps Joey Bart now as the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for bowl one. Struck out in his first at bat. The 1 0 home hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. A Rosarena will get there and he puts it away to retire the side. One left for Minnesota. Halfway home, still no score. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Matt, race manager Kevin Cash talked to me in between innings about his lineup's offensive production. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. Despite the fact that they've yet to push a run across, the game is still tied, and the pitch count for their opposition is really getting up there. They think that making him work as hard as he has is going to pay off later in the game and that they just need to stick to the process. All right, Heidi, thank you. So now to the plate, Francisco Mejia, 0 for 1, went down looking his first time up. Yeah, Matty, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. And now the first pitch. Hot shot to third and handled for the first out. The right fielder, number 16, Will. Up next for the Rays, Will Benson. He went down on strikes in his last at bat. Yeah, and he didn't put up much of a fight either, Matty. Got to find a way. Can't go down three pitches. I don't care if you're staring at him or swinging at him. You have to find a way to make this pitcher work a little bit harder. Strike one to start the at bat. There's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if they have to incorporate that into their mindset. A swinging strike, and now it's 0-2. One out, nobody on. A little too much bite on the breaking ball that time as it's well off the outside. And here's a ball hit in the air. Kepler is over and he puts it away in foul ground for the second out. The batter, number five. Back to the top of the order now. And here comes the five tool middle infielder, Wander Franco. First pitch on the way. Sends that one out of play for strike one. The wind up and the 0 1. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Swing and a liner. That gets down and the inning will continue. Running hard. He's digging for second. Around second now and they still haven't flagged this one down. And he is in to third with a two out triple. The second this thing got past the outfielder, you knew it was at least a double, possibly a triple, but he turns on the afterburners and is safely into third. In now, Robert Poisson. He squares it up and hits a bolt to left center. And a base hit, and that'll get the run in from third. Boy, it's been tough to score in this one so far through the fifth inning but that RBI base hit right there is a nice breakthrough. Yeah it's been a great pitcher's duel up until this point. They've been executing on the bump without question but that RBI knock right there might set the tone for the later innings.
That brings up Alec Bohm as he'll look at a fastball too high for ball one. Little slide step action there, Dan. Yeah, he's clearly thinking about the steal right here. Didn't happen, but the cat mouse game continues on. Pitch out. Nothing doing. The 2 0. Runner goes for second. Pitches a cold strike. The throw is not going to get him as he swipes second. Well, that stolen base was about as bang bang as they come. And as Show Track demonstrates to us right here, it was his top speed that really made all the difference. He's definitely got wheels, and they were on display there. Looking to keep this a one run game, the pitch. Look out. Don't want to hit him there. It's full three and two. Well, giving up hits is one thing, but judging by that last pitch, he doesn't have any consistency with his release point right now. He doesn't know where it's going, and he knows it. Here's the payoff pitch. Now here's one hit in the air to the right side, and no one will get this one. You can really tell they're trying to keep the ball in on this big slugger right here. Is that an effort to keep him from getting extended, do you think? Yeah, I think that's the idea, Matt. But he might spin the win if he starts looking for it in there. He set the 3 2. And that misses ball four. So it's first and second now with two out. That was a great battle right there. He tried to get him to chase, but he laid off some really tough pitches and got a walk. Got to tip the cap to the batter that time. So now it'll be the four hole hitter Randy Rosarena and we'll see what he can do here with a pair of runners on base and two gone here in the fifth. Ready with the first pitch here it comes as he takes a cold strike at the knees it's 0 and 1. After the walk and with runners on the bags, he couldn't afford to fall behind here. Nice job of jumping ahead with strike one. Poisson over at second. Bohm at first, two out in the inning. Boy, that's just about in the catcher's glove there. It's 0 and 2. Man, as a pitcher, you have to love pitching 0 2. Multiple ways up, down, in and out, throw the breaking ball, a lot of different ways to get guys out. A little bit off the outside. It's one and two. Big spot right here. That's a great pitch to try and see if you could get him to fish outside the zone. He's still in the driver's seat right now, and I'd expect something else to miss off the plate. The one two pitch. This is a huge pitch right here. I don't think he wants to go 3 2 and have those runners be in motion. Look for him to be aggressive with what he thinks is his best pitch right now. He's set the 2 2. Now a ball lined toward the alley in left center. And this is down for extra bases. And with two out, this might get them both home. And not in time as the second run scores. Well, maybe the tables have turned a bit. Earlier in the game, the pitcher had his way with him, but he wins the battle this time and in a big way. Two runs on the board as a result. Here's the Minnesota skipper making his way out to the mound. And it looks as though that's going to be all for his starter here tonight. So he'll depart here in the fifth after working just four and two thirds and he's on the hook for the L unless this one turns around. Jordan Belazovic the 6 5 right hander takes over on the mound.
Stepping in now, Michael Brasso. And he hits it hard to the right side. And that's by him into right field for a base hit. And they're not going to get him. He's in there at the plate. Well, that run won't be charged against him, but he's still disappointed. His job is to shut the door down when they call on him, and he just couldn't get it done there. To the plate now, Donovan Casey. And he's a bit tardy there on the first pitch fastball. It's nothing and one. One for two in the ball game thus far. Line towards center field. Oh, and it eats him up a bit. He doubled up on the heater right there. First one he blew right by him. Second one timing was on point. And he was able to get a hit. Standing in now, Dylan Moore, as it's on the ground toward the hole. Throw on to first will finally retire him as the inning will draw to a close. Nine men come to the plate, four score. We're through five here at the ballpark. The Rays are in front, four to nothing. Top half of the sixth about to get started, and Michael Chavis will step in at the plate. Michael. First pitch of the A.B. now as he gets a good curveball here to start the at bat it's strike one quite an interesting outing up to this point as we head into the middle innings he's pitching quite well but you look at his first pitch strike percentage less than 40 percent that's going to be something he's going to need to clean up moving forward. Ah, changed things up on him and he got him to swing through it one and two now. Tried to shoot the corner and he missed it two and two. There's a drive out toward the gap in left center. He's around first heading for two. And he will pull into second with a leadoff double. Hey, D. Rowe, it's kind of getting late early. That's only their first hit of the game, and we're into the sixth inning. Yeah, he, this guy's been on point all day, working it in and out. Their pitching staff obviously did their homework on this offense. But right here, able to break through with the first knock, hopefully the pass to baton mentality goes into effect, and we get some offense. David Dahl is at the plate as he watches ball one. No one out with a runner at second. Two and oh to the Twins left fielder. Clearly staying away from him in this at bat with that runner in scoring position tells me they're trying to force him to reach for something and maybe roll over on it. Now the 2 0 home. Line toward the gap in left center. Dives and he hangs on for the out. Wow. And he is in there. So now to the plate, Nick Ahmed. Yes, he pops the first pitch foul behind the plate. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. The 0 1 pitch. Rounded up the first baseline. 
And he'll take it to the bag himself for the second out. But meanwhile, the run is in to score. And here with the infield back, they were giving him the run on a ground ball. So he just takes advantage of that and drives the run home. Good approach. Now the Rays manager is going to take that slow walk out toward the mound. And he's going to motion for his bullpen here. That'll do it for the starter tonight. So his final ledger will show just five and two third innings of work, but he did what he needed to do in this one. Luis Patino, a six foot one inch right hander, will be the one to get the call from the bullpen here. Digging in next, Luis Arias. He'll try and start things over now with the bases empty and two away following the RBI ground ball. And on the first pitch, he grounds foul. Two out, nobody on. Ball one. Just missed with that heater, but even if he wanted to swing, I don't think he could have caught up to that one. And he misses two and one. Action in the Rays pen now as they've got a lefty and a right hander up and throwing. Now the two one. Is taken ball three. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he misses ball four. So he comes out of the bullpen and immediately walks the first man he faces. The first baseman, number 22. Miguel. Here's Miguel Sano. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, and kind of shocked he got blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one. And we'll see if he tries to cheat to something this A.B. And he starts him out with a strike on the outer half. We're going to see him throw that hard fastball early and often. Here's a breaking ball, but it doesn't quite find the strike zone. The 1 1 is strike two swinging. Yanked the slider across that time, laid off for a ball. Got him, and he goes down on strikes for the third time. A run, a hit, and a man left. We'll see eight, nine, and one do up in the bottom of inning number six. The Rays four, and the Twins one. of the sixth inning now and that'll bring in the veteran catcher Francisco Mejia. Francisco Mejia. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. A ball and no strikes. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. Ball and a strike now. Now the one and one pitch. In the air now, out to left. On the run is Dahl. He's there and records the first out. So now here is Will Benson flew out last time up. He's ready. Here's the first pitch.
tried to get him to go after the slider, but it's one and one. Oh, they have him looking awfully confused up there right now. It's one and two. Tough fastball that time, but he hangs with it to stay alive. Hit out towards second. Scooped up. And that's the second out. Digging in, the switch hitter, Wander Franco. Two for three for him so far, including a triple. First pitch on its way. And a good slider here to start the at bat, but it's ruled a ball, 1 0. Oh. And he misses again, 2 0. Oh. He may be down 2 and 0 oh after those first two pitches in this AB, but those are pitches he can feel pretty good about. They didn't miss by a whole lot, so it's not like he's all over the place. Robert Poisson would be next if they can keep this inning alive. Into the corner and slicing foul. And this is taken low for ball four, and they'll have themselves a two-out base runner here after all. Well, he walked them on five pitches, but that last pitch was really good. He missed down, but only by a hair. When a hitter has a 3-1 count, he can wait until he gets a pitch he loves. Stepping up is Robert Poisson. First delivery to him. He'll take that first pitch strike all day long. If they're going to take 0 0, he's going to pound that zone and get ahead. Much more susceptible down 0 1 than 1 0. And a dive, but he's back in. And another throw over. Runner back safely. Now the 0 1. He's running. Pitch misses low. The throw down. And it's far too late as he steals second with ease. Well, they threw over there multiple times thinking he was going to try to swipe that bag. So they were onto him, but he just waited it out and took off when he had the chance. Nice job of base running there. The 1 1. Misses ball two. Sixth inning. 4 to 1 is our score. Ball three. The three one. This is on the ground over to first. And the stolen base winds up as a moot point as the inning is over. One left for Tampa as they hold on to a four to one lead. Leading off the inning it'll be Jake Cave. As they'll look to spark the offense and even things up. First pitch of the A.B. now. And that's in there for a strike. Patino, a six foot one inch right hander. He's in his fourth season as a major league player. The wind up and the 0 1. This is why the manager pencils these guys in, in the middle of the order. Big spot. Time for them to get back in this game with a couple quality ABs. And he misses there. One and two. Ball 
That one misses, and I think a ballpark full of umpires disagrees. It's two and two. Three balls and two strikes to the twin center fielder. Wow, from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2, and that last pitch on 2 and 2 wasn't even close. He had this guy in the ropes, but now he let him right back into this at bat. Now the payoff pitch home. High and deep down the left field line. And it's a foul ball. Another full count pitch home. Got him. Three. Flat out locked him up with a changeup right there. Usually you're trying for a swing and miss when you throw that pitch in a two strike count, but clearly he wasn't looking for it. So it's a backwards K for him. At the plate now, Max Kepler. As the first pitch to him is a changeup that can't find the zone. It's ball one. 0 for 2 for him to this point. Like ball two below the knees, but it's ruled a strike, and that evens the count at one and one. Hey, you want someone sometimes to rattle the bat rack, but also the guy on the mound's got to eat too. They're executing their pitches out there. It's going to be tough to score some runs. Hit the target, but this is low, two and one. We're in the seventh now, four to one, our score to this point. He's fallen behind now, three and one. Full count to Max Kepler, three balls and two strikes. Three two counts are usually a time to challenge the hitter, but I think he'll be careful here. Shoot for the corner, and if you miss and you walk him, so what? That's better than him putting one in the seats. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. And this misses here for ball four. Just the second walk he's issued here into his seventh inning of work. And I'm sure the manager is just fine with that. I mean, it's better to battle a slugger like that to the end and end up walking him than serving on up where he can really hurt you. Next up, Garrett Cooper. It was a walk in his last trip. Now here's the first offering. And he'll watch one miss up and away for a ball 1-0. And a wild pitch here as this one's to the backstop. But it won't skip away far enough for the runner to advance. And this ball runs away for ball two. Two and one. Swing and a miss strike two. Hey, without question, he got him leaning out over right there. Four pitches away, I'd be diving out over the plate as well. And then he dominates him on the inside corner. Nice pitch. Full count, three balls and two strikes to the Twins DH. Kepler leads off first with one away. Back up the middle. And that gets through for a one-out base hit. Hey, this guy's having a big series in the postseason. It looks like to me that the moment isn't too big for him. He's slowing the game down. He looks terrific. Yeah, absolutely. Postseason monster right here. Having a huge series. Any big leader can have their moment mid-May, but to do it when it gets cold outside means everything. In now, Joey Bart. As he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. Here's a fastball that's nowhere near the zone. It's 2 0 now. Has to be a challenge pitch coming up here. He probably doesn't want to flirt with loading the bases. The 2 0. 
Michael Chavis, who represents the possible go ahead run here, waits in the on deck circle. Fouled off. First and second now, one man out. Can't keep that one fair either, and now the count is full. Now the three and two pitch. A line shot to third base. Throw to the bag, and the runner's back in time. Now batting the third base. Michael. Next to hit Chavis. is Michael Chavis. And Dan, this could be a real make or break situation at this point in the game. Yeah, Matt, at least scoring one run in this inning is so important to them to possibly get back into this thing. Baseball doesn't have a clock, but you only have 27 outs to work with. They're running out of those pretty quick. First pitch on its way as he'll take a look at an off speed pitch here that misses for ball one. That's inside two and oh. Got to find a way to execute either a good fastball down the way or flip something off speed for a strike. You cannot miss over the harder plate in these situations. The hitter is on high alert. Swing and a ball hit to the left side, and this is going to wind up a souvenir. Here's a shot to right field, and that's going to be in for a base hit. Kepler ignores his coach. He's chugging for home. The tag, and he's safe as it's now a two-run game. Boy, that's an aggressive send there, Dero, because this outfielder has a very strong throwing arm. Yeah, and when you're sitting in the hitter's meeting, that's stuff they go over. So every base runner is on notice, knowing that this guy's got one of the strongest arms in the league, but they challenged him, and it worked. So they'll make a matchup move here and bring on a southpaw to face the left-handed hitter due up. David Dahl to the plate now as he'll go after the first pitch to him and comes up empty at strike one. We could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. On its way the 0 1 pitch grounded to the right reined in. And not too shabby out of the pen. Takes just two pitches to get the ground ball, and that ends the inning. Twins get a run on two hits. Striding in is Alec Bone to try and get something started in the home half of the seventh. Ready to deal. Here comes the first pitch. As he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. Bobby Cox always used to say, I'm going to put you in positions to be successful. Well, against a modern-day bullpen, easier said than done. These guys are throwing flames from all arm angles. The wind-up and the 0-2 pitch. And a slider's in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. Yeah, that's the spot right there for an 0-2 pitch. Make him see if he'll chase that slider in the dirt, especially with the bases empty. Here comes the 1-2. Now a ball hit hard toward first. And there's a base hit, so a chance for some insurance here to start out the home half of the seventh. Hey, some guys can handle the postseason lights, and this is obviously one of them. Another base hit leading off for the boys. This guy's had a monster postseason so far. Stepping in now, Randy Rosarena. 
And a swing from him yields a foul pop out of play to the right. And there's ball one. If you're going to have success against some of the better hitters in the game, you've got to get that pitch right there. 0-2, he's almost certainly out. 1-1, he's got a chance to really do some damage. And there's ball two now. Seventh inning here at the ballpark. 4-2 our score. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. Two and two count. Here it comes. Good job to spoil that one away and he stays alive. A two and two count. Here's the pitch. And again he's unable to keep it fair but he's putting together quite a battle at the plate. Four foul balls in this A.B. Pitcher cannot find anywhere to go to put this guy away. He struck him out the third time he's fanned in the game. That's the third time in this game he's gone down on strikes. Up Not the game he was bad. hoping to have when he was the taking batting man. practice, but at Michael. least his guys are ahead. Russo. At the plate, Michael Brasso. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. A hit and two tries for him so far. Hit softly on the ground to first. He's got it. The second for one. But wisely, no thought of a return throw, and the inning will continue. The left field. So now into the box is Donovan Casey singled in his last at bat. Has a look now the pitch as he rips it on the ground to second fielded cleanly and that will conclude matters here in the seventh. So no runs on a hit here no errors one man left on eighth inning coming up the Rays are out in front. Four to two. Ready now is Nick Ahmed. He'll start things out for us here in inning number eight. First delivery to him. In there, strike one. Tying run stands on deck, but it'll only matter if the guy in the box can get on base. Yeah, and that has to be his mentality at the plate right now, Matt. He can't be the hero, so he needs to do what he can to give the guy behind him a chance to be the guy. Behind 0-2 now. Nothing in two count, and the pitch. And this is yanked hard down the left field line. And this will find the wall deep in the corner. Throw into second. That's what you call a clutch piece of hitting. Down two runs, he puts himself in scoring now position back. and Second brings eight. the tying run to the plate. Please. We'll see what they do with oh, the right base right. open here. This one's getting interesting. And now, Luis Arias. He represents the potential tying run if he can launch one or find a way around the bases. Yeah, Matt, I kind of doubt he's thinking about going yard, even though that would be the best result they could hope for. He's not a long ball threat, and he knows it, so he could just be looking for some way to keep that line moving. From the stretch. And a high strike there, 0-1. Yeah, that looked like an auto take right there, just trying to measure up this pitcher's stuff. And a little 
tapper here in front of the mound as this may work as a sacrifice. And that's the first out. So the big bat of Miguel Sano digs in next. He went down on strikes last time up. And he can't allow the same thing to happen in this situation. This is a big time spot in this game. He's got to find a way to put the ball in play. In there, 0 and 1. That's three straight sliders in a row. I'd be shocked. I would be shocked if he went to that well a fourth time. I'd be looking heated. And it's one and one. Getting late, 4 2 our score as we play the eighth inning. A two ball, one strike count to the Twins' first baseman. All even now, two and two. And they're working the outer half here, but that one's wide for ball three. Every base runner in a close game like this really matters, so you can't afford to be giving out free passes this late. And he'll strike out here yet again, as it's been a ball game to forget thus far. Four strikeouts. Wow, he's just a lost cause in this one. That's the fourth time he struck out in this game alone, and that's not something you'll forget very quickly. That's about as bad of a day as you can have. So with a left-handed hitter waiting, they'll go to their own left-hander out of the bullpen. Standing in now, Jake Cave. As with two away, he'll swing and miss at the first pitch. It's 0-1. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. Tying run at the plate, the 0-1. Starts to go around here, but it doesn't matter. This is strike two anyway. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. Twins wind up stranding one. Still down by a count of four to two. Ready to go for the last half of the inning, and that'll bring in the second baseman, the second Dylan baseman. Moore. Here's the first pitch. As he lays off a fastball too low for ball one. Ready to deal. Here's the 1 1. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. In today's game, everybody's trying to work off the mound north south, trying to elevate that heater. He wanted that pitch right there, but I can tell you as an offensive player, I'd rather give you six inches off east west than to have you call that high fastball. Nearly got the inside, but ruled the ball. Call didn't go his way on two and one, but it's important here on three and one to still make a quality pitch. You have to have the mindset that you're still the one in the driver's seat. Into the windup and the pitch. Yeah. And this is taken here for ball four. So the leadoff man's on base to kick off the home eighth. Well, that was a slider in a 3-2 count, and it just didn't tempt him enough to get a good swing. A good job of pitch recognition and knowing the strike zone to draw the free pass there. So next to the plate for Tampa Bay, Francisco Mejia. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. First pitch coming, here it is. Offered at and missed, here's the throw. Not in time, he's in there at second. You might say that that steal is on the catcher because the pitcher was so quick to the plate with his delivery, but I think the credit has to go to the base runner. Great jump, and he really showed off his speed there. 
Moore stands at second with no outs. Now a look and a throw back to second. And he'll get back in safely. And it's fouled away. Low with a fastball here in the dirt even. It's ball one. I'll tell you, it's a helpless feeling for a manager or a pitching coach when your pitchers are having a really hard time throwing strikes. What are you supposed to do other than keep trying new guys until someone starts attacking the zone? A runner at second, nobody out. And this is taken for a ball high and tight, two and two. Down the third baseline. This is on the ground over to first. Reined in. And he'll take this to the bag himself for the first out, but it's a productive one as the runner moves up now to third. Right Kirby Yates answers the call now, looking to get this one onto the ninth third. inning without any trouble. Will Benson will be his first assignment, and he's got a tough spot here with the runner at third and only one gone. He's set and the pitch. The offensive approach here is simple. You know the pitcher is going for the K, so set your sights middle of the plate. And then don't worry about the infielders. They're so close, hard contact is a guaranteed no rhythm. Good slider there, gets a swing and miss. Fouled away. One out and a runner on third. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. Props to the hitter right there for laying off with a guy on third. You want to be aggressive, but you have to get a pitch you can drive. The one two. Misses up and in. Working for the punch out and the offering. He's got it. On to first, and there were two down. So a runner at third, two men are out, and in to swing the bat next is Wander Franco. First delivery to him. Some movement now in the Minnesota bullpen as a right hander's up and throwing. One and no pitch on the way. Fly ball out toward left center field. Waiting on it is Dahl. And that retires the side. Ray's strand just the one. As they can't add to their four to two lead. Peter Fairbanks comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Set to start the ninth in this one, and standing in is the veteran outfielder, Max Kepler. Looking for base runners here as they're down two playing on the road. Not an easy thing to do, trying to score runs or bunch hits together off of a closer. One and oh, the count. Now the pitch. Man, coming out of the late rounds, you have to grind for everything. Nothing is given to you. 
And this guy has turned himself into a very solid big league ball player. That's a big accomplishment. Now the 2 0 -oh home. And he goes against the shift there as this is on the ground at the left side. Throw not in time as he's able to leg it out. I know it wasn't pretty right there, Dan, but that has to frustrate the pitcher. Lead-off guy, any time he gets on, usually creates a problem. You know what, Gilroy, it's especially tough when you get as late in the game as we are right now. Any time you get that lead-off guy on and have that pitcher start pitching out of the stretch, it always puts more stress on that pitcher pitching out of the stretch. Into the box now, Garrett Cooper, as he comes up empty on a pitch right down the middle for strike one. A hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ball game. Here's the 0 1. Just a bit high with the fastball, but didn't get the call. A runner at first with no outs here. On the ground to the right side. There's one on to first, and that's the very last thing they needed at this point in the ball game. As there are quickly two away now. Oh man, that's just a backbreaker right there. You get the leadoff man to start the ninth, and you're looking pretty good, right? Not when the next guy bounces into a double play. We'll see if they can get the final out and wrap this thing up. Into the box, Joey Bart, as he will take a look at a fastball in there as that strike zone expands just a little. It's 0-1. He could really use a knock here, 0 for 3 in the game so far. Comes set and the 0-1. Good pitch as this is swung on and missed, and now they're down to perhaps their final strike of the evening. Hey, hats off to the pitching staff right here. They've been able to hold a hot hitter in check in game four of this series. Final strike for the Twins. Tried to get him to go after the slider, but it's one and two. And it's getting loud now here in the Dome. A sold-out crowd, 36,973 fans on their feet. And a swing and a miss as they definitely had him reaching for that one. And this ball game is over. Hey, this was a pretty tightly played game. Got a little bit of everything in this one. Some timely hitting, runs on the board, key pitching, and defense in certain spots. This one was a fun one to watch. Before we take our leave, time for a look at our final line score here in what turned out to be a close two-run victory. Four to two, the final score tonight. Tampa Bay have evened up the series at two wins apiece. Tyler Glasnow earns the victory on the mound. So that'll do it for us. For Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to the new website, theshow.com. The final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious Rays, four runs on eight hits, no errors, they left nine runners on base.